as a big big ceremony for all the teachers in the whole world so yeah i'm uh, so glad to meet you on this ikx talk stage uh we call that ikx connect the world and the universe we hope we give all this science talk to connect the world and the universe to get the people no matter where you are in the morning in the evening or in the noon time or in the daytime and you can hear all these wonderful science talks so this is Alice Zhang from Peking University. Uh, I'm so happy because I'm a uh, host of this I can ask the talks for more than one year. And uh, this become one of the best, you know, program online. And uh, everyone love it. And uh, every Friday we met here. So, and I can add, as I say that, we have a lot of speakers. We have a lot of, you know, professors to deliver talk on this stage. And this September, we have four of them. Uh, last week, we have John Rogers from Northwestern University. And this week, today, we have uh, Professor Masayoshi Isashi from Tohoku University. Uh, next week, we'll have Natish Tahaka and was from John Hawkins. And after that, in the end of September, we'll have a Professor Xi Peng, who was from Peking University, my colleague. So all of them will do wonderful talks, will tell the latest results and the, you know, wonderful in, uh, interesting frontiers of the field. So today, we are so honored to have a Professor Masayoshi uh, Isachi. Uh, I see that today is our great, uh, you know, a teacher's day. Uh, we have a professor in such because he's a great teacher. Has a teaching uh, more than hundred or uh, two hundred students. Uh, supervise that. And uh, today we have a mm, very strong, you know, panelist. We have a Zhu Qing Wang from Sichuan University. We have a Dong Fang Wang who's from Jinning University. We have a Ken Tos who's from Tohoku University. We have a Xin Xin Li who's from uh, 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 Shanghai uh, Cats. So uh, this uh, week, we were, this was tonight uh, our team. And uh, now let's welcome Professor Yusach. Uh, I think I don't need to introduce more about Professor Isachi because in the field of maths, Professor Isachi is one of the maths characters. Yeah, he was in this field for more than oh, 50 years. So he done so many, many outstanding work that uh, more than 100 you know, products was produced by different uh, company industry and uh, we all get benefited. And uh, his... Uh, well known and sounding name in the world and he made win a lot of awards i couldn't list you know uh, all of them but it's bunch like this and uh, <clears throat> today he's going to talk a story about uh, you know the man's life yeah how he started and uh, what he did in the last 50 years and uh, what he's doing now uh, he's uh, collaborated with more than 200, almost 300 industries, how it happened. Professor Isach, yeah, now the stage is, your, is yours. Are you okay? You okay? Are, you ready? Are you ready? Yes. Okay, please. Thank you. Alice, ladies and gentlemen, my name is Masayoshi Isachi. I was a professor in Tohoku University located in Sendai, Japan. After retirement, I'm working as a CTO in MEMSCOR and senior research fellow in Microsystem Integration Center in Tokyo University. It's my great honor and pleasure to have this opportunity present in ICANN-X. I will talk about my MEMS life for half a century. The MEMS means microelectromechanical systems. My interest have been in circuit integration and in commercialization for society. After introduction, I will present catheter sensors developed when I was student and research associate. I made integrated circuit when I was associate professor. As a professor, I commercialized MEMS by collaboration with companies, and later I developed sophisticated MEMS by heterogeneous integration using MEMS on foundry-made LSI. Finally, our activities 
on hands-on access fabrication facility will be presented. This slide shows trends of MEMS product. MEMS is based on semiconductor <coughs> microfabrication and have been used for key components. As sensors in various systems, the MEMS have advantages of miniaturization and integration, which enables high sensitivity, low power consumption, low cost arrayed structure, and so on. This technology was pioneered in Stanford University in 1970s. In Japan, Dr. Isemi Igarashi in Toyota Central Research Laboratory developed piezo resistive pressure sensor as shown in right left, upper left. This was used for engine control in 1980s and played important roles to reduce polluted exhaust gas of cars. In 1990s, accelerometers Uh, in 1990s, accelerometers were used for crash sensing in airbag systems. Since 2000, MEMS have been used for various purposes for mobile phone and other various systems. Arrayed MEMS, which have ICs in it, have been used for printer head display using mirror array and so on. MEMS market has been growing at plus 13% annually. MEMS products are very diverse and hence development is their bottleneck. This slide shows my personal history. I entered Graduate School of Electronic Engineering in Tokyo University in 1971. My supervisor, Professor Matsuo, stayed in Stanford University this year and informed me latest topics. I developed iron sensitive field effect transistor, ISFET, in postgraduate course. I have been sticking to common facility for publication as shown in green color. The structure and the photograph of the ice fit are shown on the left. Gate insulator surface of FET is exposed to electrolyte and voltage is generated between the insulator surface in the electrolyte. The voltage is determined by concentration of specific ion species in electrolyte, and hence this can be used as ion sensor. The device was fabricated in Hitachi. The channel length was 10 micrometer. I coated wax by hand to insulate the FET surface, except gate area of 50 micrometer. I was so skillful to coat wax that Professor Jay Zemel in University of Pennsylvania called me Goldfinger. However, my Goldfinger couldn't be used for commercial product. I made a probe structure to be assembled at the end of one millimeter catheter tube, as shown in light. The ice, set, the ice set was awarded 10th heritage by Institute of Electrical Engineering Japan on 17, uh, 2017. The catheter ice set was commercialized by Kurare and Nihon Koden as catheters for pH monitoring. These were used mainly in esophagus and stomach for the diagnosis of esophageal reflex disease. 
the catheter sensor was not used in blood vessel for human beings because we cannot calibrate the sensor in the blood vessel. When I was a postgraduate student for five years, I wrote only one paper on the ice pack. But I could make fabrication facility for 20 millimeter square wafer. These equipment have been used until now for initial prototyping. There was a model of such homemade fabrication facility in Professor Nishizawa's laboratory. And I was very happy to learn this in his laboratory. I became research associate and studied with students. The slide shows a March piezoresistive pressure sensor catheter in order to prevent packaging stress. The sensor chip is fixed with soft silicone rubber. It is not influenced by environment because the piezo resistors are buried. I have been interested in such packaging for practical applications. This shows an example of the March pressure sensor catheter used to measure intravascular pressure and intravascular pressure simultaneously. You can see voiding pattern in light. We used the homemade fabrication facility and hands-on second-hand ion implanter, which I repaired. This facility was used by other laboratories as well. As shown in upper right, Professor Kiyoshi Nakamura fabricated film bulk acoustic resonator, F bar, in the facility in 1980, which was one of three first F bars. I became associate professor in 1981, and my mission requested was to make integrated circuit in our laboratory. Design and test environment are needed. There was not internet in 1980s, but we had a network using telephone line between universities. We could use a logic simulator developed in Kyoto University. We wrote a graphic editor for layout using Fortran, and this was a good opportunity for me to run programming. Functional IC tester system, test system was made in-house by connecting our homemade circuit to parallel I.O. of deck mini computer. This was good opportunity as well to run digital circuit. This slide shows our photo mask making process. Mask pattern design was printed out on a transparent film. Photo masks are made using Reduction camera we developed. Various ICs in this environment. And I wrote a textbook named Fundamentals of Integrated Circuit Design in Japanese in 1986. We developed parallel image processor using our homemade IC. 2D barrel shifters made in house are shown in upper right. These are used between processor arrays and 40, uh, 64 kilobyte memory array. The system was connected to the parallel IO of the mini computer LSI 11 Chrome Deck. You can see an example of the parallel image processing for 
counter extraction in lower night. We developed many ICs, which have maximum 1,000 transistors with 10 micrometer channel length. Examples are shown here. The lower left is an implantable telemetry CMOS IC. We fabricated ICs in response to requests from another laboratories as shown in light. The lower light is high temperature operational amplifier, which can work up to 300 degrees centigrade using silicon sapphire wafer. This was required by geothermal energy extraction project. It was important to pass on our knowledge to students, and hence we made manual as shown in this slide. I have been interested in the method to access and to deliver versatile knowledge. I became a professor in 1990 and commercialized MEMS by collaboration with companies. This shows fabrication process of piezo-resistive absolute pressure sensor. After making these resistors in two, the silicon wafer is anodically bonded to a glass wafer, which has through holes for interconnection in three. The through holes are metallized. Diaphragms are made by etching the silicon in four. Packaged pressure sensors are made by dicing the wafer and by connecting lead wires in five. The cavity is sealed at the glass silicon interface around the glass holes. As shown in the photograph, the in, the, in light chip size is 1.8 millimeter square. The pressure sensor was applied to ventricular assist device for continuous monitoring of blood pressure. Surface of the sensor is covered with anti thrombogenic material. Capacitive sensors have advantages of low power consumption comparing to the piezo resistive sensors. However, the circuit to detect capacitance has to be located close to the sensor, not to be influenced by stray capacitances. The left slide shows fabrication process of integrated capacitive pressure sensor. The CMOS circuit for the capacitance detection is fabricated on a silicon wafer in two. And the silicon wafer is anodically bonded to a glass wafer, which has electrode for capacitors and the through holes in three. The other process steps are same with those of the piezo-resistive absolute pressure sensor. This process to make packaged small chips on a wafer is called wafer level packaging. As shown in the right, this sensor was commercialized by Toyota Machine Works, now JTEC, as a highly sensitive pressure sensor to monitor cloaking of filters in air conditioners. The capacitance detection circuit for the integrated capacitive pressure sensor is shown in this slide. The sensor capacitor CX is charged and discharged alternately using a Schmidt Tringer circuit. And its oscillation frequency is <laughs> detected from the supply current as shown in, in upper right, upper left. Capacitance, depending on the pressure, can be measured from the oscillation frequency. 
the frequency versus pressure characteristics is shown in the lower left. If it, the frequency is temperature compensated, we fabricated the current source using CMOS circuit with depression MOS transistor as shown in top right. Using this circuit, compensation not only for temperature, but also for supply voltage variation at five volts are made as shown in lower left or lower right. The influence of the anodic bonding process on the CMOS circuit was studied using the test element group shown in upper right. The principle of the anodic bonding is shown in upper left. Negative high voltage is applied to the glass at around 400 degrees centigrade, and the glass and the silicon are electrostatically bonded at the interface. We found that the leakage current is caused at the exposed PN junction. However, this could be solved by shielding the PN junction surface with metal layer as shown in lower left. I'd like to explain the weha level packaging used for the pressure sensor. Since rings have moving parts, direct molding with plastic cannot be used and test on the weha is difficult. The weha level packaging has advantages as small package size, high reliability by hermetic shielding, and high yield because MEMS is protected during dicing process. It is known that cost is reduced by 80% because we can minimize investment for assembly and need not expensive ceramic packages. The weha level packaging was applied to MEM switches for LSI tester. In advanced transistors cannot be used at the front end of the LSI tester because circuit to protect from electrostatic destruction increases input capacitance and hence reduces bandwidth. MEM switch shown in upper left was used for the front end. The cantilever is moved thermally by the principle of by meta. Direct electrical feed through in the glass are required to minimize stray capacitance. However, there can be air leakage at the feed through. In the grass, uh, in, in the grass are required for minimized stray capacitance. However, there can be air leakage at the feed through because the metal of the feed through has larger thermal expansion than grass. We developed the electrical feed through using low temperature co-fired ceramics, LTCC, instead of the grass. The LTCC used has cross thermal expansion with silicon as shown in the upper center. The fabrication process is shown in the left. The first green sheet for the LTCC is prepared holes made in it by punching a plant with gold paste in three. This is laminated with another green sheet, which has gold paste in the hole and gold paste pattern.
Next, it is seen that at 850 degrees centigrade for one hour, the sintering is performed by fixing it on a plate to prevent its lateral shrinkage. There, the air leakage could be solved by the gold paste pattern. Finally, the LTCC is anodically bonded to silicon in six. This LTCC with the field through was commercialized by Nikko Limited. Electrical interconnection from the field through to the silicon is made as shown in light. First gold tin is electroplated and tin is etched out in nitric acid. This makes nanoporous gold as shown in the photograph. By anodic bonding, we can make electrical interconnection to silicon by using the deformable nanoporous gold. Various a vacuum cavity is needed by for resonating sensors as a gyroscope, thermal infrared sensors, and other devices. Principles of the anodic bonding is shown in the left. A glass plate is stacked on a silicon wafer and is and negative voltage is negative high voltage is applied to the glass at 400 degrees centigrade. Positive sodium ion moves and the negative space charge layer with SiO minus is formed at the interface with silicon. The glass is electrostatically bonded to the silicon surface. A current is caused by the displacement of the sodium ion. However, we can see small current even after bonding. This current is caused by electrochemical reaction of the SiO minus at the interface, which generates oxygen gas. Light graph shows the, the evidence of the oxygen generation. Silicon wafer having seen SiO and silicon oxynitride diaphragms and cavities as anodically bonded to a glass wafer in vacuum. In case of large cavity volume, the diaphragm is deflated in atmosphere. This is because the cavity is vacuum state. On the other hand, in case of small cavity volume, the diaphragm was inflated because of the oxygen gas generated. Vacuum cavity can be obtained by using non-evaporable getter in it. The getter material is activated during the anodic bonding at 400 degrees C centigrade and absorbs the oxygen gas in cavity. We made the structure shown in upper right. This has a thin diaphragm and the non evaporable getter in the cavity. The lower graph shows measured displacement of the diaphragm versus outer pressure. The diaphragm is deflated even at 0 0.01 Pascal, which means the cavity pressure is kept at less than 0 0.01 Pascal. This technology to make the cavity, vacuum cavity was applied to silicon diaphragm vacuum gauge, and this was commercialized in Canon and Elba. Small pressure difference can be detected capacitively using a thin silicon diaphragm. The fabrication facility 
for 20 millimeter square wafer was effective for MEMS prototyping. Simple and basic equipment are suitable for training people who have experiences of all the process steps. This was also suitable for developing new MEMS devices, taking advantage of process flexibility. The facility has been shared by many laboratories and companies. One hundred and thirty companies dispatched researchers to our laboratory for two years in average. This chart shows companies dispatched researchers from 1991 to 2002. The yellow means automobile companies. The Dispatched researchers are motivated and they stimulated our students well. This slide shows examples of commercialized MEMS product from our group. Nikkei Sanyo newspaper took a questionnaire on open collaboration in 2003 from major companies in Japan. Our laboratory was evaluated with highest rating. Silicon microphone was developed with NHK and produced by Panasonic. The microphone is humidity resistant and has been used for TV program as a swimming game in Beijing Olympic game. Electromagnetic two axis optical scanner was developed and commercialized as a ranging imager by Nippon Signal. Ranging images are obtained, ranging image, images are obtained using time of flight of light. And this system has been used for platform doors in railway stations in Tokyo. Such systems are expected to be used for LIDAR, that is light detection and ranging for future autonomous cars. Electrostatically levitated rotational gyroscope was developed. A ring silicon rotor with 1.5 millimeter outer diameter rotate at 74,000 RPM. Two axis rotation and three axis acceleration are measured simultaneously with high precision. The electrostatically levitated rotational gyroscope originated with this electronic vacuum gyro gyroscope presented in 1964. High precision gyroscope was needed for navigation of a submarine because it cannot receive GPS signals under the sea. Fabrication process of the electrostatically levitated rotational gyroscope is shown in this slide. Aluminum is patterned on a silicon on insulator SI wafer in two. After anodic bonding to the glass, silicon substrate is etched out in four. Grooves are made by deep reactive ion etching in five. After another glass is anodically bonded on it, the wafer is diced. 
Finally, the, the aluminum is etched out and the rotor is released to rotate. High speed digital signal processing by capacitive sensing and electrostatic actuation in all directions is used for its levitation and rotation. This was applied to motion longer for subway in Tokyo by Tokyo Keiki. Two researchers from Toyota Motor stayed in our laboratory to develop gyroscope from 1992 for five years. After going back, they commercialized this Yo-Rate accelerometer for vehicle stability control in 2003. This sensor has been fabricated by deep reactive ion etching of SOI wafer in the factory and used in more than 1 million cars. Principle of spin detection by your rate sensor is shown in upper left. Silicon masses are resonating electrostatically as a tuning fork. The motion of masses in opposite direction by the spin is capacitively detected. Spin is eliminated by using front brake asymmetrically as shown in light. The side slip is also detected as shown in the lower left using the sensor as an accelerometer. Process equipment required was developed in our laboratory. This slide shows a deep reactive ion etching system called deep RIE used to make deep grooves and holes in a silicon wafer. A silicon wafer etched through the thickness for a resonating gyroscope is shown in light. This deep RIE was presented in 1992. Wafer has to be cooled down in this system, and hence this was not so convenient as the deep RIE system presented and commercialized later by Robert Bosch. However, we could fabricate various systems using our deep RI system. The deep RI system widely used now is this Robert Bosch method. SF6 gas for silicon etching and C4F8 gas for passivation are supplies alternately. High etching rate and deep etching are achieved at room temperature. We could successfully apply our homemade IC to the integrated capacitive pressure sensor as mentioned before. However, we could not fabricate high density IC in our laboratory. This slide shows common to wire tactile sensor array to be used for collision safety of, of robot. Tactile sensors are connected to the common two wires. One sensor is chosen by modulating the power supply voltage as shown in upper right. And the sensor consumes the supply current IP depending on the force to the sensor. This system called polling type is not real time. And hence it is not suitable to prevent the collision. Our IC can integrate only 1,000 transistors on a tip. On the other hand, 1 million transistors could be integrated at, the, at that time in 
90. We gave up to make IC in our laboratory and have been using highly integrated LSI made in foundry since 2007. Heterogeneous integration of MEMS on foundry made LSI was enabled by stacking MEMS on LSI. This technology enabled sophisticated MEMS systems. Tactile sensor network on a flexible cable is shown in upper left. This system is event driven and hence real time. The tactile sensor distributed on the skin of nursing care robot ensure collision safety. We developed this system collaborating with Toyota Motor and Toyota Central Research Laboratory. The LSI Weha made in foundry is shared with non-competing companies and other laboratories to reduce cost as shown in lower light. Fabrication process of the tactile sensor chip is shown in this slide. After pre groups and metal patterns are formed on the CMOS LSI weha, benzosiclobutene BCB polymer is coated on it in three. Patterned aluminum is formed on the polymer as an electrode for capacitive sensor and the MEMS weha for capacitive force sensing is bonded using the BCB polymer in five. Part for interconnection is exposed to backside by thinning. The backside is insulated in seven. Finally, it is metallized and the weha is passed to chips. The fabricated tactile sensor chip is connected to the flexible cable having common signal bus and power supply lines. Packet signals for asynchronous communication used are uh, uses, uses common bus to enable real-time tactile sensing with a 45 megahertz clock signal. The heterogeneous integration of MEMS on LSI is enabled by weha level transfer shown in this slide. MEMS are fabricated on the carrier weha to avoid damaging the LSI and hence various MEMS, for example, PZT film formed at high temperature can be applied. The MEMS weha is bonded to the LSI weha with adhesive resin or by bumps in two. The carrier weha is removed, leaving the MEMS on the LSI weha as you can see in three. Weha level packaged heterogeneous integration chip can be made by bonding the LTCC weha with through via interconnections and dicing. We are damaged by Great East Japan earthquake 10 years ago. Approximately 10,000 people uh, died by tsunami in our Miyagi prefecture. People couldn't use wireless communication with smartphones at that time. And hence they communicated by writing message on a board. We started a project to develop cognitive wireless communication system which use TB white space in emergency. The TB white space is channel frequencies 
which are not used in local area. This project is co collaboration with National Institute of Communication Technology, NICT, Murata Manufacturing, and other groups. The system developed has been demonstrated as shown in the photograph. The developed com cognitive wireless communication system is shown. Key components were developed using the heterogeneous integration as will be explained in the following. Film bulk acoustic resonator, FBAR, is widely used for wireless communication. This has piezoelectric thin film made of aluminum nitride, which has electrode on both sides on the film and air gap under the film. We fabricated the FBAR on CMOS LSI for port Voltage controlled oscillator VCO, as shown in this slide. Fabrication process of the FBA on CMOS LSI is shown in this slide. Silicon on insulator SY wafer, which is flipped upside down, is bonded on the CMOS LSI wafer using adhesive polymer BCB in two. After handle wafer and buried oxide layer of the SI wafer, SOI wafer are removed, ruthenium and aluminum nitride are deposited and patterned in four. Aluminum top electrode and interconnection to the CMOS LSI are formed, and finally silicon layer under the <coughs> and as a FBA is etched out. <coughs> it, zirconium tin oxide, PZT, has good piezoelectric property. RF memo switch using PGT bimorph was fabricated on LSI. The fabrication process is shown in this slide. The PGT film was deposited by soil gel method and annealed at 680 degrees centigrade on a silicon carrier wafer in one. Polymer is coated on it and flipped carrier wafer is bonded on the LSI wafer in three. After the carrier wafer is etched out, polymer is patterned in five. Gold is electroplated for electrical interconnection using resist as a mold. And finally, the PGT bimorph is released by removing the resist in the polymer. The other heterogeneous integration method is triple level selective transfer. This method is required in case the size of the MEMS chip is different from that of the LSI chip. Selective transfer process called laser lift off or debonding is used as shown in upper right. This method by irradiating the acrylic resin using UV laser through a glass carrier wafer in three. The resin is carbonized to lose adhesion and the FBA chip is transferred to the surface of the LSI wafer. The selective transfer technology was applied to fabricate multiple surface acoustic wave so filters on LSI. Each LSI, uh, each so filter chips on the LSI 
has different resonant frequency as shown in lower left. By the chip level selective transfer, March F bar on LSI Weha was also fabricated as shown in the slide. The chip level selective transfer was applied to fabricate a bandwidth tunable saw filters as well. Barium strontium titanate, BST variable capacitors called balactors are bonded selectively to a saw filter chip. The bandwidth can be tuned as shown in lower light by applying bias voltage to the balactors. 20 times 20 boron doped diamond BDT electrode array was fabricated on a LSI, which has arrayed operational amplifiers. This was used as amperometric biosensor called bio LSI. The, the electrode current is detected by integrating in the feedback capacitor as shown in lower left. This shows the fabrication process. The BDT, BDD is deposited at 800 degrees centigrade by chemical vapor deposition on the silicon carrier weha. Flipped carrier weha is bonded on the LSI weha by adhesive BCB resin as shown in three. After removing out the silicon carrier weha, the BCB is patterned and electrical interconnection between the LSI pad and the BDD is made in six. Finally, it is coated with the photosensitive polymer SE8 and the BDD is exposed for the electrode. Current buses potential curves of electrodes are shown in the upper left. Electrolysis occurs catalytically at low voltage with gold electrode. On the other hand, <coughs> the BDD electrode can be used in wide voltage lengths for electrochemical measurement. The photograph in right shows 2D image of histamine diffusion measured with this bio -LSI. The, the lower left photographs are screening of anti-cancer drug. We can differentiate living cancer cells by measuring oxygen reduction current because the living cancer cells consume dissolved oxygen. Digital fabrication of LSI by maskless lithography is expected for cost-effective small volume production and efficient development of LSI. Massive parallel electron beam light systems which have uh, 100 times 100, 100 active matrix electron emitter array have been developed. We used nanocrystalline silicon electron emitter, which is made by electrochemical anodization of silicon in ethanolic hydrofluoric acid. By electrochemical oxidation in ethylene glycol, Thin oxide film is formed on the surface of the nanocrystalline silicon particles. Ballistic electrons accelerated through cascaded tunnel junctions of the oxidized, oxidized silicon particles are emitted through a thin gold or monolayer graphene electrode. 
by applying low voltage at 10 volts. The low voltage is indispensable for the active matrix driver LSI. The emitter array fabricated is shown in left. This has through silicon via for interconnection to the active matrix drive LSI. The photograph of the emitter array and the exposed pattern on EV register using one-to-one -one projection system are shown in light. The LSI for the active matrix control was fabricated through 0.18 micrometer CMOS high voltage process. Circuit for one driver cell is shown in the, the upper part. The LSI shift in bitmap data and emitter is driven at up to 15 volts. The, the, the LSI operations were successfully confirmed as shown in the lower part of this slide. Photographs of the LSI chip is shown in this slide. The array driver cells are separated into five concentric pins to apply different offset voltages for field curvature correction, which will be explained in the next slide. This cross section of the LSI after ring isolation and the the wiring is shown on the lower part of the slide. You can see isolation groups through silicon beads and the backside wires to apply offset voltages to each rings. If electronic aberration compensation methods are proposed for simplified electron optics. That left shows the principle of field curvature correction. The reflection angle of the objective lens are controlled by applying offset voltages to the electron emitter. On the other hand, <coughs> pattern distortions <coughs> are reduced by adjusting <coughs> focus with condenser lens array as shown in light. <coughs> Multi column as shown in the upper left is expected for target commercial electron beam light system. Two simulation results of miniaturized reduction lens without and with the field curvature correction are shown in the slide. The light shows that application of offset voltages to the electron emitters is effective for focusing the electron beams on the warehouse. You can see cross type 100 reduction EV light system with the active matrix electron emitter array and the member of this project in left. This project for 10 years was closed in 2016. And the book shown in light development of massive parallel electron beam light system for digital fabrication of LSI in Japanese was published in 2018. I'd like to introduce our activities on open collaboration in hands-on access fabrication facility. MEMS are versatile and produced in small volume in many cases. Various equipment are needed to fabricate MEMS devices. However, 
their util utilization factors are not high. I believe common use of facility plays important roles for MEMS development. Professor Emeritus Junichi Nishizawa is a pioneer of semiconductor in Japan. He organized and operated semiconductor research institute for around half century. It was closed in 2008 and has been used as Nishizawa Memorial Research Center. Hands-on access fabrication facility in the center has been operated by Professor Kentaro Tots. I think he will answer questions in the discussion after my presentation. Companies which cannot prepare their own facility dispatch their employees to operate equipment by themselves for development and small volume production in four and six inch facility. Companies are allowed to sell MEMS devices produced in the fab since 2013. There is 1,800 square meter clean room based on old power transistor factory. The layout of the fact facility is shown in this slide. Most equipment are not new, and hence our staff who worked under Professor Nishizawa before can maintain the equipment and teach the operation to engineers from companies. This was established in 2010 and the number of users has been increased as shown in the slide. This slide shows users of the hands-on access fabrication facility. Approximately 300 companies dispatched their engineers and paid users fee, paid users fee in accordance with their usage. Expenditure and revenue was 291 million yen last year. 70% of the revenue was users fee and our facility is nearly self-sustaining. User company commercialized MEMS devices. This pulse quantum cascade laser of which MEMS grating was fabricated in this hands-on access fabrication facility. This was commercialized in Hamamatsu Photonics. There are exhibition rooms in our center. The installation and maintenance are my hobby. Visitors can see various MEMS devices in this Sendai MEMS showroom. This shows historical museum of technology. Various knowledge is important for MEMS development to enable efficient access to the knowledge. More than 1,000 files of MEMS technical papers can be found using keywords in Excel files. Annual MEMS intensive course for three days have been held 19 times in different places. These courses are free to attend and 
organized by MEMS Park Consortium in Sendai. The MEMS Park Consortium organized MEMS training program for three months. Fee is 1 million yen, and the trainees participate with their own subject. They can develop MEMS for their product the in the course, and an example of commercialization is pressure sensor by Yamamoto Electronic Works shown in the right. This has been produced in MEMS core. Relationship between different organizations is important. Sendai City had partnership in, with Fraunhofer Institute in Germany since 2005 and held annual Fraunhofer Symposium in Sendai. We have been collaborating with Fraunhofer Institute for Electronic Nanosystem, e ENAS located in Chemnitz, Germany. Tokyo University has Fraunhofer Project Center since 2012, and Associate Professor Jörg Kramel has been working for it. Jörg Kramel developed this low temperature solid liquid interdiffusion bonding using kappa gallium by using copper and electroplated gallium. Two silicon plates are bonded at 50 degrees centigrade. This slide shows our open collaboration scheme in Sendai. In addition to the hands-on access fabrication facility in lower left, the initial stage prototyping facility in lower right is located in Graduate School of Engineering. This is based on the made in house process equipment for 20 millimeter square warehouse and mainly operated by students. MEMS core shown in upper left is a contract development company for MEMS devices and the processes. Mr. Koji Homma is pres president and I am a CTO. It is hard for such a contract development company to survive. However, the MEMS Core has been in business since 2001, owing to minimized investment by using the hands-on access fabrication facility at Tohoku University. Furthermore, advanced component in upper right, which produced MEMS switch for LSI tester before, is in business of contract develop uh, contract production. This book, 3D and circuit integration of MEMS which I edited was published from Wiley VCH in last April. I published basics of MEMS based on seeds and future MEMS fusion with LSI based on needs in Japanese before. In my presentation, my MEMS activities in Tokyo University for half a century was reviewed. Open collaboration is important because development is a bottleneck for MEMS to be used in society. MEMS are diverse and hence I think we should try to find ways for diverse field by lowering the barrier of MEMS business. Finally, I acknowledge our collaborators. Thank you so much for your attention. Thank you, Professor Yusuf. Wonderful, 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 wonderful talk. I have this book on my hand. 
Yeah, I really love it. It's give a lot of information. Uh, now, yeah, let's move to our panel discussion part. We see all the old friends. Uh, first, let's welcome Professor Zhu Qin Wang, who's from Sichuan University. Uh, he has spent time in Japan and uh, in Tohoku University, also working together. So, Professor Wang, yeah. And uh, we have Professor Dongfang Wang, yeah, who's from Jilin University, he has stayed more than almost 20 years in Japan, and was uh, working a long time with Professor Isachi. And uh, he has a lot of story to share with us. Uh, we have Professor Ken Tooth, as one of my best friends. We're working together, and now he has worked together with Professor Isachi. Yeah, for the facility who you know served for more than oh more than three hundred industries. It's amazing. Ken, welcome. And we have uh, Xin Jin Li, a uh, famous scientist in China, maps. And he did a lot of job. He also worked together as postal, you know, when he was young. Now we uh, welcome all our panelists and uh, to say something. Yeah. First, uh, Dong Fang. Yeah, yeah, I know, I know you. you are a senior and uh, you also spent many, many years in Japan. Yeah. Please. Yeah. Uh, Dong Fang, you mute. Dong Fang, you mute. <laughs> Uh, can you turn on microphone? Okay, sure. Turn on microphone, please. Yes. Okay, hello. Hey, sure. Yeah. yeah. Now, okay. okay, I can hear you. Oh, yeah. Very happy to be with you together. Uh, this is Dong Fang Wang, and uh, uh, yeah, oh, more than twenty years ago, I I got a chance to uh, study and work under Professor Sashi. So I have a lot of stories, and uh, uh, for example, I got a book. Okay, this is, uh, uh, you remember Professor Sashi? Oh, yes. And also, yes, I maybe so many things to share with you, like this picture, remember? <laughs> <laughs> also, uh, very uh, uh, three important things from uh, maybe Professor uh, Nishizawa. Okay, three concepts. Anyway, because just we have so many uh, panelist today, and um, it's very difficult for me to select one topic. Okay, um, one topic uh, <laughs> that is two most, M-O-S-T, two most. The first one is, Professor Esashi was selected by Japanese press as the most useful professor. <laughs> right? <laughs> most useful professor. When we say useful, useful technology, Used for product, but now will use for purpose. I think maybe there are two reasons. <laughs> Can be raised. First one is just like Professor Sashi also usually say, I'm happy to answer any demands from industry. Thank you. Right? Thank you. Yeah. The second one is I'm happy to be a person who is needed by industry. Oh, I see. <laughs> okay. Yeah. So there's some uh, little bit of facts. Um, I still remember when I entered into the uh, Professor Esashi's uh, professor room for the first time, I found there is a very small table <laughs> for discussion up to maybe two people. Okay. Oh. Always a, a big, always say, uh, book share, shares with many, many fires of summarized papers for discussion anytime is if necessary. So he's actually waiting for discussion to, to help people to answer the needs. So that is the first most. So what is the second most? A such laboratory was selected by industry as the most powerful laboratory, <laughs> right? <laughs> yes, <laughs> yeah. this is our book. <laughs> yeah. So it's so, okay. Uh, some maybe the reasons for that. Maybe we can raise the first one is open and share laboratory, just as PPT mm -hmm. um, explained by Professor Sashi. The second one is to accumulate or and inherit very important knowledge, or in Japanese we say know how. Mm -hmm. okay. And I, I'd like to say maybe uh, we have three, the third reason. Do maybe Professor Sashi has some 
a very special talent. <laughs> from <Golden> finger. <laughs> from research to uh, development and also to a uh, business startup. So a lot of people can do both research and development, but it's difficult for us to, to start up a business. But Professor Esash can do that, like Memscore, like some other company or whatever. And so I'd like to, because the time is limited, so I'd like to uh, make a, uh, uh, a uh, raise a query to Professor Esashi. Are you ready? I think you are very tired because you make long <laughs> But still, I'd like to ask one question. So how to develop useful technologies, but to avoid useless technologies? <laughs> <laughs> Ah, thank you, Professor Wang. <laughs> uh, yesterday, in uh, ICANX story, I, to I told that uh, to respond to request is yeah. uh, uh, very uh, good to uh, for, for it was very good for for, for us. <laughs> Well. <laughs> okay, it is. I think the professor is actually always open mind to listen yeah. to all these, you know, requirement or demand from the industry, the market. And, uh, you know, he has technology to do that. It's a super. I really couldn't believe, you know, two, 300, over three, almost 350, you know, industry yes. working together with you. Yeah, yeah now, yeah, with this time limitation, we have uh, other panelists who was couldn't wait here. Yeah. Yes. Okay, yes. yeah. Okay. So, uh, okay. Zhu Qing, yeah, Zhu Qing, Professor Wang, are you ready? Yeah. Okay. Uh, good evening, everyone. So, I'm uh, Wang Zhu Qing. I come to uh, Sichuan University last year from the Tohoku University. And uh, I uh, founded the MEMS team uh, in Sichuan University as a key member now. And uh, I worked in Tohoku University for, in Japan for six years, <laughs> from 2014 to 2020, last year. So before I'm com com coming to uh, China. So I have been work, 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 uh, working in Ono Lab as a associate professor, and uh, and um, it's my great honor to share some uh, small story about uh, Professor Asashi as a guest today. At, uh, at first, you know, I want to share a very small story about uh, maybe Professor Asashi didn't remember that. No, no. Then I first year I were at uh, Tokyo University. One weekend, a teacher come to the honor lab and knock on the door. Asked, asked me because they just one the, the weekend, so just uh, I in the lab. So he, he asked me, can, can, I, can could I come in and use the computer, maybe some software in the computer? And uh, he was very kind and uh, brighter than uh, all the time. And uh, you know, it turned out that uh, he was a professor assassin because I do I it's the first day, first maybe once once in Tokyo University. And uh, that's my, uh, he's my uh, higher mentor, you know, Professor Ono. He, he also was a member of uh, uh, his team. So you can see that, you know, Professor Asashi is always modest and uh, polite in his uh, research, in his uh, lab, and ask the question that he used uh, using the equipment. So you can see, it's very surprising for me, you know, so famous uh -huh. Professor <laughs> so ask me to use the, 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 the computer, you know. Here, this, yeah, you're like a grown child, right? But, yeah, right. you know, yeah, the super father come in. Yeah, can okay, I use that? <laughs> That's a... <laughs> yeah. For me. Yeah. Okay, Jinxin, are you raise hands? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, please, <laughs> yeah. Okay. Yes, uh, This evening, yeah. Very happy to yeah to listening to the Professor Isashi's talk. Uh, <laughs> uh, for many times is uh, <laughs> I learned, learned so much from the professor's yeah. uh, presentation. Even repeat, I, I can learn some. 
something is uh, yeah, uh, just like uh, Hai Xia's introduction, yes, I'm Xin Xin Li, uh, from Shanghai Chinese Academy of Science. I remember it's about uh, uh, 21 years ago, I, mm -hmm. I left uh, from uh, Isaji Life back to Shanghai, uh, working in the uh, uh, Shanghai Institute of Microsystem and Information Technology. Uh, I've been there for continually working for 21 years. Uh, there, they have uh, we have a state key lab of transducer technology working on MIMES. So even so many years is uh, passed. Uh, I still, yeah, clearly remember, yeah, uh, every day uh, working in the live in Sendai in Isaiah. <laughs> it's yes, it's just like uh, Dongfang saying, Isaiah Live is a very <laughs> special life. Yes. Uh, I really learned so much. Uh, one thing I, I remember is very uh, impressed me uh, even by now is, uh, you know, the it's such a live every Monday uh, evening we have a Sodan Kai. Huh? Uh, <laughs> Sodan Kai. Similar. Uh, yeah. Every student report work. Yeah. And every time one student feels some difficulty, and need some information, need some knowledge, uh, feel about, uh, feel some confused or some things. Professor Isashi swiftly, yeah, went to his <laughs> office. There they have uh, quite a large uh, bookshelf. Uh, on the shelf is uh, almost all the MIMES journals, all the MIMES conference uh, uh, and, and the books. Yeah, clearly, yeah, list there. And the professor can quickly find the correct yes. information. That's a meter requirement from the student. Yeah, Maybe that's right. One, one minute. Then open, accurately open to the page. <laughs> I gave the uh, student, yeah, this is what you need. You <laughs> know, yeah. That's amazing. So I, 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 I remember I, too. I remember too. Where he can, professor can. Can you remember the things so clearly? <laughs> so after uh, after a long time, you're touching. I know <laughs> Professor is not is a, is a quite a leading uh, scientist in Japan. So it's very very uh, uh, very busy every day. But even so, uh, have some time, Professor. It's a uh, read the paper very carefully. Mm -hmm. The want to know everything occurs in the world in the mind's world every day. Well, what is a new technology? It's a new design, new device. And I think professor read the paper very careful. Mm -hmm. So, so yeah. it's why he can remember so clearly. So uh, this activity of professor itself, it's just a, a good training, good teaching to the prof, uh, to the student. That's right. It's just, uh, just today's topic. Yeah, professor Isashi is a great teacher. Yeah, I think professor Isashi is <laughs> really so. The student just from this, yeah, professor activity can know how to read the paper, how to accu accumulate knowledge mm -hmm. to meet a new project. So yesterday, I had to call my, my son. No, my son, two years ago, my son became a, a young sign, a, a, a young assistant professor in the United States. So uh, I said, uh, I gave him uh, meeting, meeting, meeting. If I miss, I said, you should uh, join this. I think it's joining now. <laughs> so I, I said, you should learn how to become a good teacher. Oh. You should learn from uh, the older, older, older generation professor. Uh, <laughs> such, uh, what, what, what I was just saying that my, my son is too young at that time, too little. <laughs> so I never <laughs> see, see <laughs> Professor Isashi. Maybe today is the first time my son. No, oh, this is for first <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, that's a that is a teacher. Yeah, that that is supervisor. No, no professor, I just uh, hope Professor Isashi can be helps. Yes, I, every day knows so so working hard. Anyway, the the <laughs> aim there. so the final time is. Uh, <laughs> it's okay, thank you. Yeah, we can listen to Ken. So, how is Professor Isachi working right now every day? Yeah, uh, it's still till the midnight. <laughs> uh, not midnight, but uh, he worked. Uh, he working hard, but uh, 
uh, now he's supporting our activity. Uh, just uh, Professor Sashi introduced uh, Hands One Six Five and Nishizawa uh, Joint Center, and uh, he is managing the uh, museum. And also he fixed everything in the <laughs> laboratories and uh, tools. Uh, we really thank uh, his uh, hospitality and uh, uh, open mind uh, 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 things. So uh, actually, I I entered the Professor Sashi's laboratory in 1998. I was uh, oh, really? just 20, 20, <laughs> 23 years. Yeah, yeah, 23 years. Uh, and, at the time, still I was uh, almost a child, uh, uh, undergrad student, oh. and uh, oh. I'm very, very a lucky boy that uh, I I have been supervised uh, Professor Sashi um, more than 20 years. <laughs> then uh, I got a uh, uh, no position, a nice working um, um, uh, environment, and. Uh, I got the family in Sendai. <laughs> oh, okay. uh, really, I thank you, Professor yeah. Sashi. And uh, sometimes I um, I come to his uh, house with my family and uh, Professor Sashi and uh, his wife uh, welcome us. And uh, we really um, thank his uh, hospitality. We, I'm very, very lucky. <laughs> <laughs> yes, I think you have said, yeah, yeah. You know, all of us are so lucky. All the students have, a, you know, no professor in such are very lucky. And uh, for example, especially you, you know, 23 years, I think you really, you know, learn a lot. Also, you know, get his golden finger, right? <laughs> yeah, now you can work with the facility so well. You know, I you. really want to know how you support these 300 industry partners. Yeah. Uh, it's uh, really based on the process such as uh, mind that the uh, open collaboration, we share the, the facilities as well as the technique and uh, uh, technology they, that they need, uh, the company needs. So uh, that is the basic idea, just sharing, that's it. <laughs> okay, share your share your facility, share your, uh, you know, knowledge, technology, also share your happiness, right? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah happiness is my, our happiness. <laughs> <laughs> yes, okay, yeah, uh, I think, yeah, we, we, we show, yeah, show this very lovely picture in Xiantai. Yeah, as a professor, you such you may remember this. Yeah, yes, yeah, the 2014, you know, we have this uh, big, uh, you know, event. I can, yeah, the uh, international contest in Xiangnai, uh, that's July 20th. I think now we can see Professor Isachi here and uh, me here <laughs> and uh, Ken, yeah, yeah, Ken, you here. <laughs> yeah, so also we found another people here. It looks different. Yeah, it's not like others, all that, you know, a very happy looking for, but it looks more serious, right? Yeah, actually, he is one student participant in this international contest. And he was looking very serious to the front because in front of us is our moderator, like me here is our moderator there. The moderator is a Japanese girl. Uh, yeah, now they have the beautiful stories coming. We are Aiken family. Now we welcome Ni Feng. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Komoko, another, uh, are you there? Yeah, please. Oh. Yeah. <laughs> so Ken, uh, you yeah. are chief professor. Do yeah. you remember this? You <laughs> remember oh. this? Yeah. Yes. Oh. 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 Ah. Now, yeah, oh, they man. also have a little Aiken baby. Oh. Oh. <laughs> yeah. Oh, what's this one? <laughs> so, yeah. Hi. Yeah, you can say something to us. Hello. Hello. Oh. Long time no see. <laughs> yeah. So, uh, Tomoko is a moderator. Was a moderator that time. He's a, she's mm. helping us, you know, to organize all the event. Mm. And uh, that time, you are an English teacher, right? Yes. At that time, I was a high school English teacher in Sendai. In Sendai, that time I was a high school English teacher. <laughs> Nifo, what are you doing there? You look uh, more serious. I was doing a contest, like a professor YKB take us there. 
Okay. Then what happened next? <laughs> yeah, then we we like uh, we meet in Hong Kong again, and then and then after uh, after a long time we get married. Yeah. And the time I was a high school teacher. <laughs> so yeah, actually, Professor Yusachi, this may be a surprise, a surprise to you and to Ken. Yeah, I'm uh, really, really, you know, like this story because 2014, you know, yeah, the young people go together in Shantai. Mm. And uh, later, you know, they really dated each other. Even Tomoko was uh, such a nice girl, you know, move from Xianai to Hong Kong, and now they stay in Shenzhen. And uh, Nifu now is working at Huawei, and uh, Tomoko is working at the DJI, Dajiang. Yeah, both of them are working in the high-tech field, and they have a lovely baby, as I can trust. <laughs> I can't be there. Yeah, so you know, I'm really, really happy, and uh, all the I can, you know, teachers. Yeah, I, I think Professor Isaac, I want you know have this part for you is to be a teacher. You know, yeah, you are super teacher. You have everyone, and you got the people go together. And uh, Nifo say that the I can contest change his life. Right? <laughs> yeah, thank you. I'm very happy. <laughs> yes, it is. Yeah. So thank you. Thank you. Yeah. So uh, Professor Isaac, this uh, is uh, very, very important for us. And uh, we really appreciate you are here and uh, to deliver the talk and talk everything. And this was I can ask, you know, uh, as you I will deliver a certification to you. Oh, but oh. this time is uh, as a special certification oh, yeah. because today is uh, the teacher's day. So, <laughs> Professor Isachi, you deserve the best teacher. Best teacher. So, okay. Yeah, oh. Professor Isachi, you are the best teacher. Uh, thank you for joining us. And thank uh, you. Thank you. Yeah. Thank you. So, uh yeah now uh next week yeah we come today next week we have uh, you know professor nitish uh he is from john hopkins he'll talk about narrow engineering frontiers and the challenges i hope to we'll see you next friday and enjoy icax talk show okay thank you see you see you next week and now professor you guys uh, you all your students yeah